Yo, what is going on YouTube? This is your boy Dan, aka Ajab, a pretty ass week 12 of the UCL. The St. Louis Ramparters are taking on the number one team in the league, the Durham Drudigons and Coach Leo or Six Foot Hacked. If you guys are hyped for this match, show your love on that like button down below and definitely make sure you guys subscribe if you're new. We've got the two top teams back to back weeks. Last week we came up just a wee bit short due to a little bit of a mistake on my part in the team building. Apologies for that, but if you want to check out the team building for this week, I highly encourage it. We go pretty in depth, talk about all the Pokemon bringing, what Pokemon I think Leo's bringing, and so on and so forth. So definitely worth the watch. Otherwise, you can see what I'm thinking he's gonna bring. There's a few things that are interchangeable there. I do have a question of the day as well today. Who is your favorite mythical Pokemon? Mine is Victini, as you see on Leo's team. He's got a Victini, which I'm not looking forward to facing as it's a Pokemon that I've used in the past myself, but I don't want to run against another one. Um, and have you been collecting the mystery gifts? So I think Keldeo's mystery gift actually starts in a couple days, or maybe today, the day this goes up, so on and so forth, so definitely keep an eye out for that. But uh, let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, let me get connected with Leo here. This should be a pretty good match, and hopefully we can pick up a W. We are still in the playoff hunt, just for anyone who's wondering. Uh, we're only one game out, and it's against Jay. Jay is the guy we're kind of, uh, kind of trying to catch up to in the playoff hunt here. And we actually play Jay. So if we were able to beat him in a few weeks, we would have the tiebreaker if we can get the same record as him. But we need to focus on Leo for today. So let me get focused up here. Let me connect to the internet and we'll see how things go. All right, guys, we are connected here with Leo. Gonna find out in just a moment exactly what team he's bringing. I feel really confident about the Clefable, the Victini, the Blastoise, and the Terrakion. The other two are a little bit iffy. I think the Crook and the Registeel seem to be likely. And we're gonna find out. He does bring the Shaman. Uh, does not bring the... What does he not bring? He does not bring, he got Clefable, Terrakion, Victini, Blastoise. Doesn't bring the Registeel, just brings Shaman instead. So, not too surprising there. Actually, in fact, that was kind of what I figured he was gonna bring. So I think he just brought his his top six picks, basically. The, the six Pokemon he drafted first. Uh, let me just make a note that he brought Shaman instead of Registeel. Uh, okay, so that leads me to believe that his Stealth Rocker is most likely to be Crocodile. I'm feeling like that's pretty possible. So he could lead Crocodile. Um, he could also lead with something else like Victini. He could lead with, you know, a lot of different things. I'm thinking uh, Vaporeon lead here is actually looking halfway decent because uh, I don't think Shaman would be a legit lead. I could also lead Braviari here and just get a U-turn out on the first thing that I see. Uh, it would reveal my scarf though early, which I'm not exactly sure I want to do. Um, I don't want to deal with a lead Victini. Um, I mean, Venusaur does match up relatively well against the team. Let's actually lead Venusaur. Um, it matches up pretty well. I could take on the Crocodile. I could kind of threaten that thing out by going for Giga Drain. Let me just take a quick look here at Venusaur versus Crook, but I think this will work. Um, let's just say he's like a Scarf Crook, just out of curiosity for the calc here. Yeah, Giga Drain does a tremendous amount to him, even if he's a bulky variant. So I really like that lead. It matches up really well against pretty much everything except for the Victini, maybe. Um, but uh, we'll see how, how this goes with our, with our Venusaur here leading off. So uh, he could lead Crocodile. He could lead uh, Terrakion. He could, I mean, he's got a multitude of different leads, but Venusaur matches up really, really well against a lot of his teams. So let's kick things off with Asparagus here. I know I could take a hit from the Victini if I need to. Uh, he's going to lead with Vic Vicente, which is the Victini, of course. So he very well may just go for a Psychic here right off the bat. I'm going to Mega Evolve and actually just go for the Protect right off the bat here because I don't want to take a Psychic. I kind of want to find out what kind of set he is. I highly doubt he's a Substitute variant. So let's just go for the Protect here. Let's go for Mega Evolve and we're going to go for the Protect. Uh, he's gonna probably be really surprised to see me staying in, but I kind of want to find out if he's got U-Turn or not To determine whether he might be scarfed or banded whether he's got psychic whether he's specially or physically offensive We'll go for the protect right here off the bat to find out what he's gonna do I really want to do a lot of scouting in this team to find out he's gonna go for the will-o-wisp here actually with the Victini Which is very very interesting. So he might have thought I was gonna switch there Obviously, I don't want to take a burn on asparagus by any means. Uh, I don't want to take a burn on anything really, but I'm, I don't have the best options. Um, I don't want to take a Psychic from this thing, so I think what I kind of have to do here is go into Oxygen. Um, I could then Scald. I would love to go in King Tut and get up my T-Spikes, because those are going to be incredibly important. But I need to figure out an opportunity to get into King Tut to do that. But at least I know he's not Scarf now. But what is he? Is he just going to go for another Will-O-Wisp here? Or is he going to go for a U-Turn? I'm actually going to go into King Tut here. I feel like King Tut can take two hits from a Victini. Now that I saw these Will-O-Wisp, it leads me to believe he's like kind of more of a support set. But the problem is, if I don't get up my T-Spikes, I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble, actually. Um, 
if he V creates me, I'm gonna be kind of struggling a little bit. Um, I kind of want to go into my King Tut though. I really want to get those Toxic Spikes up, and I feel like um, that's a pretty decent matchup. He may just U-turn. Would he V create here? He would Psychic most likely. How much does a Psychic do? I mean, if I'm calculating the Life Orb variant against my Cafagus, I should be able to take it. Um, what does he do if he has Psychic? Um, he does do. He does like two KOs with Psychic. So that's a potential move. Um, this is a tough call here. I doubt he's Life Orb though. Um, I really got to get those. Let's go into let's go into oxygen here. I think King Tut is is a good play here, but it's a little risky. It's a little on the riskier side. So let's go into oxygen and see what he's gonna do here. He very well may have the bolt strike. He's gonna go for Willow Wisp again, so he just double Willows. That's fine. I could have went into Cafagrius. Kind of a bummer there, but that's okay. Um, now he's got a couple different options here. I'm thinking he's gonna either U-turn out, go for a bolt strike or a thunder, or simply just switch. So I'm thinking I'm just going to switch out myself and go into King Tut here until I kind of figure out what this Victini wants to do. I'm expecting a U-turn here. And even if he goes, he could U-turn into Cro yeah, He wouldn't U-turn into Crocodile. He would U-turn into Shaman, which I can't really do much to. Um, this is a tough situation to be in because this Victini is very scary against my team. Um, I got to get King Tut and I got to get my, my T-Spikes up, but it's going to be very hard to do that with the Crocodile. But I think I have to do it anyway. I'm going to go into... Yeah, I think I got to go into King Tut. Yeah, I'm going to go into King Tut here. Uh, predicting like a U-turn or something. Uh, or a Bolt Strike. I should be... I could take a Bolt Strike, no problem. This is a tough... Tough beginning to the matchup here. I don't exactly have the best matchup against Leo's team. Venusaur is really good against a lot of his Pokemon, but... I run into issues because Victini is just so good and so versatile against my team. And um, things like Terrakion are really, really good. It, he, he could be Scarf Willow, actually. I mean, he could be. I really doubt it, but he could be. If he switches here, I'll be led to believe that he's... He is going to switch here. Maybe he's Scarf Willow. We're going to keep that in the back of our mind. He makes the play into Moonshine here, which is going to be that uh, Clefable. Uh, this is really an opportunity I have to go for the, um, the Toxic Spikes here. As much as uh, Clefable can start setting up on me right now, I gotta go for the T-Spikes, I gotta get them up. I gotta see what kind of set this thing is gonna be running. So I'm just gonna go for the T-Spikes here, get my first layer of T-Spikes up. And uh, we'll have a question mark that that Victini could be Choice Scar Victini. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll go for my T-Spikes, I wanna see what he's gonna do. And then I basically need to get Excadrill in somehow so I can iron have this thing and threaten it out. Because Life Orb Adamant Iron Head actually does a tremendous amount to Clefable. And it should Oko. Even a max HP, max defense variant. But let's see what he's going to do first. I really want to know what that Victini set is now. Maybe he's just Psychic. Psychic will o -Wisp. Maybe he doesn't have coverage for Vaporeon. I guess we'll find out at some point, right? Uh, he goes for the Psychic on this thing. Maybe predicting my Venusaur to come in. That's fine. He does a lot to us. That looks like it might be a Life Orb variant. But we'll, we'll run the Calc here in a second. And I get my T-Spikes up, which is very nice. Let's see what this Clefable, what that Clefable looks like. Because him doing Psychic there did a, a solid amount to us. Um, uh, Psychic, yeah, that looks like an offensive Clefable to me, guys. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It definitely looks like an offensive Clefable. Um, yeah, he, he went for Psychic. I, I really feel like he's offensive here. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to go for a Pain Split. Because I kind of want to see more of his moveset. And I could take a Moonblast, I believe. Based on that damage. Can I take a Moonblast? Um, yeah, I should be able to. And I can Pain Split and get some health back. Let's go for the Pain Split here. See what he's going to go for. But I got my one layer as a T-Spike up. Which will definitely help against wearing down his team. And I'm uh, pretty sure he's a Life Orb variant. But it's it's going to be very hard for me to tell. But I am going to make the assumption he's Life Orb. So I'm going to go for the Pain Split here just to... I should be able to take a Moonblast. He is going to go for the Moonblast. I should be able to live this. And I should be able to get a tremendous amount of health back with the Pain Split. And we actually live on four. Very nice. I had a feeling we'd live. And we saw the Moonblast. And you're going to see us get a tremendous amount of health back here. Get back to up to about half here. And he's actually forced to Moonblast now. Now, the tough thing that I'm, I'm kind of faced with here is I really want to go into Excadrill. But I have no idea if he has Flamethrower or not. And that's really a play that I'm not sure I want to mess with. Because Excadrill is so incredibly important in this match. But ultimately, I gotta make a play into something here. I could go into Oxygen. That doesn't seem like the best play. 
I do think Excadrill is the best play here. Uh, he may go for the site. I gotta go into Excadrill here and just hope he doesn't go for Flamethrower. If he goes for Flamethrower, I and mean, that's just a really, really good play on his part, in my opinion. That would just be a really, really good play on his part if he went for a Flamethrower. He could. He's gonna go for the Soft Boiled here. So we get a little bit of intel on his set. Uh, soft Boiled. Alright, that's really good, man. So, we're, we found out a lot about this Clefable right off the bat here, and now I don't have to really worry about the Calm Mind variant. Um, so let's see here. Like, a super offensive Clefable cannot take an Iron Head. Uh, in fact, I can knock him out with Iron Head here, 100%. The only thing he could potentially switch, I mean, he could switch into Blastoise. So I just EQ this thing, predicting the switch. Um, like, if he goes Mega Blastoise here and I click Earthquake, do I just, I mean, I 2 a KO him with Earthquake. And the Clefable, if he is, let's say he's, like, offensive, I mean, it's hard for me to tell. Earthquake is a 2k on him. So I'm thinking I'm just going to click Earthquake here because it really hits everything. I mean, Shaman doesn't want to take it. The alternative play would be to go into... Um, go into Venusaur here. But I'm thinking Earthquake is probably the proper play. I'm going to go for Earthquake. He's going to switch out. Uh, so we are going to click an Earthquake here. It could be against the Shaman. It could be against the Blastoise. It's going to be against the Crocodile, actually. He's going to take the Poison here. Will we see an Intimidate? We do see the Intimidate on the Crook, so very nice to know there. And we are going to connect to Earthquake. This is actually going to hurt quite a bit to him. It's going to do a solid chunk, and actually, it just straight up knocks him out. We get a crit there, so a bit unfortunate. I'm not actually sure how much that would have done uh, with the Intimidate, like if I checked it out right now. Assuming he's an offensive variant with the Intimidate. Actually, so, oh no, that's without the Intimidate. Yeah, the crit totally mattered, man. The crit totally mattered. Sorry, Leo. I mean, it's part of the game, but Excadrill kills... Uh, crook with EQ. So we get rid of one huge threat right off the bat there. Um, but definitely a little bit of luck on our favor there. Without the crit, we don't knock out the uh, Crocodile. And he most likely uh, is able to, you know, revenge kill us or hurt hurt something pretty badly there. But that's okay. I'll take it. I'll take that. One big kill there for Excadrill knocking out the Crook. Very, very big threat. Um, oh, I didn't mention this too, by the way, guys. I'm going to mention it now. I forgot to do it in the team builder. I did not put it in the team builder. But Cafagrius does not have leftovers. Obviously, you probably noticed that before. I had the Colber Berry on Cafagrius. I made a last minute change there, which allows me to take a Dark Pulse from the Blastoise. Uh, one Dark Pulse. Uh, it does about 50%. So I'm actually in range now where my Cafagrius should be able to live a Dark Pulse from the Blastoise. My logic there was... It allows me to uh, get my Cafagrius in and potentially stop the Blastoise from spinning and removing my Toxic Spikes. That was kind of my thought process there. So here comes Vicente, which is the Victini. Uh, all we've seen is Will-O-Wisp from this thing, but he is going to get Poison now, which is very nice. And he may very well go for a U-Turn. He may very well go for a Will-O-Wisp. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for me to go into my, um, my uh, Vaporeon. But there is also the chance that he makes a play here and decides to go into Shaman. Do I think he would double into Shaman here? And what do I switch into Shaman? Well, Shaman, Shaman does get Psychic, but it's really not going to do much to Asparagus. Uh, I'm really tempted to go into Braviary here. But if he goes for a Fire move, I'm in a little bit of trouble. And obviously, I cannot risk my Excadrill at this point in the match. He knows I'm not going to risk my Excadrill. Would he simply U-turn into Shaman? I think he's Scarfed. I think he's Scarfed. Part of me wants to just click Iron Head here. Part of me wants to click Iron Head here, but it's very risky because Excadrill puts in so much work against his team. It actually destroys like his entire team. Do I just go into Oxygen here? I. The thing is, guys, I know he's probably going to U-turn, and like I, I like feel really confident in the fact that he's probably going to U-turn. But I can't stay in with Drill because if I stay in with Drill and I lose Drill, I pretty much lose. But what I can do is I could go into Murica here to take whatever move he goes for because if he tries to burn me. I have some freedom there, but I could potentially lose my my Braviary right off the bat. So do I make a bold play here, right off the off the gates? Uh, tough call, tough call. I'm gonna make the play. We're going in a we're going in a Braviary here. Um, if he's if he goes for the U-turn, I, I feel like he might be scarfed. We're gonna go to Braviary here and see what he's gonna do. If he V creates me, that'll be pretty devastating. He goes for the Brick Break actually, predicting the T-Tar. It's a very interesting play there. He goes for the Brick Break, so we see a, a little bit of this set here, but now I know he's um, he's like at least physically offensive. Um, what I can do here is freely just go for a U-turn. 
there's really no reason for me not to. I mean, I could also just click Brave Bird at this point. Uh, Brave Bird puts in some serious work against this squad right now if I go for it. Um, let me check here. Uh, how much does Brave Bird do to like a standard Victini? I think he's still Scarf though. I mean, I could actually knock him out after Poison here, but U-Turn does seem to be the best play. He's not going to Brick Break me again. He's definitely going to switch here, especially since I think he's Scarf. What does he switch into though? He switches into either Terrakion or Clefable. But neither of those want to take a take a big hit from me. Would he just stay in with Victini here? I really doubt he stays in. I mean, I could U-turn out anyway. I'll find out if he's scarfed if he stays in with the Brick Break, because he'll hit me first. I can go into Cafagragus. He's probably locked. He's going to switch here. But what does he switch into? Does he switch into Terrakion? If he goes into Terrakion, the problem is I actually would do better off Brave Birding if he went into Terrakion. I think I might just be able to click Brave Bird here and, and just hit something really hard. I think that's my play. I'm just going to Brave Bird. I could play some shenanigans and U-turn and try to scout and things like that, but I feel like we're in a situation now where I have my T-Spikes up, I've got the offensive momentum, I can find out if he's Scarfed right now on this Victini, if he stays in and Brick Breaks me, I get 100 confirmation. He is not Scarfed Victini, we are going to connect a Brave Bird here. And I don't know if he's going to knock him out, I don't think it will, but it brings him pretty low. He may attack us here. He goes for the Bolt Strike, so we do see the Bolt Strike and he is going to knock us out. So, U-turn was the proper play there. Um, but it's okay. Um, you know what I mean? I, I feel like we got a lot of intel on the, the Victini's probably E-Belt. So Victini kills Braviari. And you can see just how low the Victini is now. Um, the problem is I don't really have a good answer to revenge kill this thing at this point in time. But what I do have is I have protect on a couple Pokemon. So I could do a couple things. I could go into Godzilla here and just get up my Stealth Rocks on the Brick Break. Um, Stealth Rocks would be nice because I could I could start to weaken some stuff. That does give a free switch into Terrakion though, and then I have to sack something off. Um, I could go into Asparagus here and simply click Protect. Um, I could do that, and if he switches, that's fine. Because what is he going to switch into? Shaman, Blastoise. I mean, Venusaur really puts in some work against him at this point in time. He could go into Clefable, but I could definitely take a Psyche from it and go for a Venishock and knock it out. He's not going to want to get into Shaman. I like that play actually. I'm gonna go into Asparagus here and just click Protect and let him kill himself to Toxic. If he decides to attack me, that's fine. Like, if he decides to switch, that's also fine. Um, but he knows I have Protect here. He's probably just gonna expect the Protect. But I don't think I gain anything by attacking here. Because whatever he switches into, Venusaur has an advantage against them. Venusaur can handle the Clefable. I can handle, you know, I mean, this is like super max speed Clefable, but even then I still have a hit. So I'm just gonna go for the safe Protect here and see what he decides to do. He very well may just, uh, just he might try to save this thing, I have no idea. A little bummed I lost my Braviary there. Um, I thought I thought it was uh, it was gonna put in the work, but it's okay. I thought I was about to just go hard with Braviary there for a second, but he, he made the bull play and stayed in with his Victini. Fair enough though. Um, but Venusaur matches up really well. I mean, it, it could take on the Shaman, even if he's Life Orb but Psychic. I could definitely take it on. Let's see if he stays in. He's going to stay in here, so I am going to get the uh, Protect off here. And I don't think he could really do anything to us. He's going to show Zen Headbutt, which is his final move, but he's going to go down. So, uh, Victini dies to Poison from T-Spikes, uh, Cofagrigus. So, Cofagrigus getting some kills, baby. Uh, that is what I'm talking about, man. Victini goes down. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. So, now we just got to play this smart. Here comes Moonshine, which is his Clefable. But how much does a max special attack Clefable do to me is he like super offensive here i gotta i gotta look this up really quick we need to look up this clefable set because i'm very confused like him bringing it in so first of all if he runs max speed clefable he very well could outspeed us if he's modest let's see modest life orb he's very much so likely life orb and he goes for psychic how much does that do to me it does half i could venice shock this thing and potentially knock him out I'm gonna go for it, man. Get rid of Clefable is huge. Get rid of Clefable is huge. Um, but is it is it better to just save Venusaur to beat something else though? I think I just Venishock here. Getting rid of Clefable would be very, very big. That'd be very, very big. Do I have enough aside if I take Venusaur out of the equation, can I still beat I mean he can't knock me out with a psychic here. I'm just gonna go for Venishock. He goes for the Psyche. This should do about half. Maybe a little less. 
It does a little more than half, which looks like he got a max damage roll. I don't even know how that did half, but it's okay. And Venishock just straight up bops him. That's why I ran Venishock instead of Sludge Bomb. Uh, Venusaur kills Clefable with Venishock. Very nice. Clefable goes down. That is very, very big. That thing is a huge threat, man. Clefable is just a tremendous threat to my team in general. Now, one thing I am worried about is uh, Life Orb Shaman. Life Orb Shaman could be problematic with a Psychic here. I don't... I, the thing is, I'm actually running like a physically defensive Venusaur this week instead of more specially oriented. How much does Shaman Life Orb do? Here comes Horsepower, which is the Terrakion. Will this thing be... What, what kind of set are you running, dude? Um... Terrakion. Let's see. Let's let's calc the Scarf set first. I can live with Stone Edge. I'm at 88 at a 187. 88 at a 187. Um, I'm at 47%. So I live the Stone Edge. What if he's Jolly Life Orb? I have a chance to live the Stone Edge. If he's Bandit, I die. What are the moves does this thing get? Does he get Zen Headbutt or anything? I need to do some quick research on this Terrakion here. Just to make sure to see if he gets any moves to hit me. Super effective. What's my backup plan? I probably go to Vaporeon, I think. So what does he get? Does he get Zen Headbutt? He gets Reflect, Rest, Poison Jab. He does get Zen Headbutt. How much does Zen Headbutt do to me? He very well may have it too. Zen Headbutt does 43 to 51% if he's Life Orb Jolly. If he's not Life Orb, I actually live. If he's Banded, I die. I could go for the Protect here, but if he Substitute, I'm in a little bit of trouble. In fact, I may just lose if he Substitute. Do I just protect? Let's just protect and see what he's going to do. I, I really don't think he's going to be a substitute variant. And, and I definitely don't think he would substitute in front of Venusaur. I want to see what kind of set he is. Because worst case scenario here, I can... I, I want to find out what he's going to do. He's really thinking about this play anyway. Venusaur just has so much usefulness in this match. I'm going to find out what he's going to do. Let's see. Whatever you do, just don't go for substitute or sword stance. He goes for Zen Headbutt, so we see the Zen Headbutt. Perfect, though. That's what I wanted to see. We see the Zen Headbutt. He's going to take some poison damage. So now I know he's Zen Headbutt, so I do have to switch. Um, I really want to switch into Godzilla here. Like, I really, really want to switch into Godzilla here to take the potential Zen Headbutt. But the problemo with that is if he's not... I mean, what does Godzilla do at this point? Godzilla actually doesn't do a whole lot at this point in the match. In fact, I'm kind of in a situation where I'm, I'm just bet I'm, I'm going into Godzilla here and just clicking Earthquake. I mean, Godzilla, all Godzilla is going to do is set the sand for me at this point in the match. And I don't think I want to set the sand just yet. I think I want to go into Oxygen here. And I think I'm going to go into Oxygen. I can go into King Tut here to take the Zen Headbutt too. How much does King Tut take? Um, uh, let me think. I mean, at this point, I'm not as concerned about him rapid spinning anymore anyway. So, it's not really a big deal. Um, I think I just go into King Tut here. I think that's the safest play because realistically, like, I don't really lose anything by doing that. And I could definitely take the set ahead, but let's go into King Tut here. Um, Asparagus has a lot of value, especially since I think I can live one hit from the Blastoise, maybe. But we'll see. I don't know if he's locked or not. He may close combat. He may Stone Edge here. Uh, he's going to go for the Rock Slide, so at least I know he's not uh, choice in any way. And had I stayed in there, that would have been nice, but he's going to take some more damage. He loses Life Orb health, so he's Life Orb. Now we know he's a Life Orb variant. That is very nice to know. And look at all this poison damage he's taking, too, which is really, really sweet. Um, so he could easily just knock us out with a uh, Rock Slide now. I mean, there's really no reason for him not to. And then I think what I do... Uh, I got to weaken the Blastoise just a little bit more. I got to weaken the Blastoise a little bit more. I got to figure out a way to heal up Venusaur. Um, let me do a quick calc here on Blastoise. Like, Mega Blastoise, can he, can he, like, kill me with anything? No, I can definitely live one hit from the Blastoise with the Venusaur and Giga Drain on it. Okay, pretty sure. Alright, so I'm thinking I just let King Tut go down here. Um, I don't want to predict anything, so let's just go for the Hex. He's going over the Rock Slide, he does connect it, this should knock us out. Uh, it should. And it does. So, uh, Terrakion kills Cofagrigus with uh, Rock Slide. Okay, and you can see he's, he's losing a lot of health here. So now I'm in a situation where I can go into Vaporeon and I could try to go for some, some shenanigans. 
I could go into Godzilla here. I can live one hit, I think. Set the sand for a few turns. Um, Vaporeon's a pretty solid idea, too. The problem is his last two Pokemon beat Vaporeon. Shaman beats Vaporeon, and Blastoise beats Vaporeon. So they're both very problematic for little Vaporeon here. Um, this is, I gotta make this play proper here. I gotta make this play proper. I think I go into Tyranitar here and get the sand up. I think that's what I need to do. Um, let's say he's, he's not Scarfed. I know he's, he's Life Orb. I know he's Life Orb. So, even with my Chopple, I actually don't live a Crowless Combat. <laughs> even with the Chopple Bear, I don't live the Crowless Combat. What I can do is I can go into Godzilla, set the sand, sack off. Nah, that's messy. That's messy. So I go into Oxygen here and just click Roar and switch him out. Have Terrakion come back later. Um, I think I have to go into Oxygen here because I don't want to set the sand yet. I don't want to set the sand. Let's go into Oxygen here. Is that what I want to do? I can go for a Wish. If he goes into Blastoise, I get a switch into Asparagus. Let's do that. Let's go into Oxygen here. And we're going to go for a Wish. We're going to go for a Wish here. Um, yeah, let's do that. I think I go for a Wish. I could Roar. I could Scald, try to knock this thing out. Uh, my gut is telling me he... I mean, I lose really nothing by Wishing, I think. I'm going to go for the Wish. I don't, I don't really lose much by wishing here. Because I know I could live a close combat. I know I could live a rock slide. I have the protect, so I can ensure that I get it back. He is going to switch. I, I thought about clicking Roar there. I really did. I could have made a double there, too, into T-Tar. But that's okay. Or into Venusaur, actually, would have been a bold, like a bold play. But I'm going to go for the wish here. And this should enable me to get my Venusaur in here against his Blastoise. And guarantee I live a hit. Because Venusaur is at 47%. And my Venusaur versus a max special attack Blastoise 100% of the time lives a hit. I should be able to live. Let me go to Blastoise here. Let me double check he doesn't get any... Uh, any he does, definitely doesn't get any flying moves. I don't think he gets any um, psychic moves either. Mirror Coat. I mean, that's really it. Zen Head. I mean, he could have Zen Head, but I highly doubt it though. All right, I'm making the play there. We're going to Venusaur here. I'm pretty sure Venusaur can live any hit from this Blastoise. So this has got to be the play we make. At this point, I don't care if he rapid spins. That doesn't bother me at all because um, he's already poisoned now. So the only thing that didn't get poisoned was Shaman, but I'm not worried about Shaman getting poisoned. Um, so here comes the Blastoise. I should be able to live any hit and get this Wish. He's going to go for the Dragon Tail, and he misses the Dragon Tail. That is a huge, huge miss. This match has not been in Leo's favor for luck purposes here. So I definitely feel pretty bad about that. Um, I get to just click Giga Drain here. I could also Leech Seed on anything, but I really just get to click Giga Drain. I could also Venishock, but I think Giga Drain is the proper play just to make sure I get as much damage off as I can. If he goes into Shaman, I could Venishock that. I'm just going to go for Giga Drain. It's the right play. Um, he's going to go for the Rabbit Spin, so he does want to get rid of these hazards. Um, and we're going to get off. Uh, he wants to keep that Shaman healthy, which is smart on his part because he keeps his Shaman from, um, from having to deal with, uh, whatchamacallit, his Shaman doesn't have to deal with the Venishock damage as much now. It's not going to do as much to him. But we're getting in a situation here pretty soon. If I could weaken the Shaman just a little bit, we're not going to be in, in a bad spot here. Um, I feel like my play is actually to just switch into Vaporeon. I think my play is just to switch into Vaporeon here. Vaporeon has very little usefulness at this point. Um, I basically just need to get... How much does... Excadrill due to Shaman with X Scissor. Like. Uh, 77 and 92. So we need some chip damage on that thing. There's really no reason for him to save this thing. Would he just go for the Dragon Tail again? I mean, I kind of like the idea of going into Vaporeon here. Vaporeon can take a hit from the other thing. I just don't want Asparagus to take damage here if it doesn't need to. Like, especially if it's like 30%, because that 30% could make the difference between me knocking something out later and not. So let's go into, let's go into Oxygen here. There's really no reason, I, I feel like I don't need to stay in here. I don't think that's the right play. I think going into Vaporeon here is the right play. Um, he definitely stays in. He might just Dragon Tail. He goes for the Scald, so we're gonna get the Water Absorb back, which is fine by me. Um, he's gonna take Poison, and he does live this turn of Poison. 
Um, my play here really is to kind of just go for a wish. I mean, the other idea would be to roar him out. Um, but going for a wish here is really nice because I could definitely take any hit from him. If he decides to dragon tail me, it's fine. Let's just go for the wish here. He's going to die to poison. He's going to go over the dark pulse. So we see his full moveset here. And it's going to do a decent amount of damage to us, but we are going to get the wish off here. And uh, Blastoise dies to uh, Toxic or T Spikes from Kefagrius. So Kefagrius picking up a couple kills. Uh, with his T-Spike shenanigans. Now I have to figure out what kind of set this Shaman is and whether Venishok is going to do a sizable chunk. I mean, it's a 2 KO with Venishok and Psychic 2 -a is me too. So I, I'm feeling like Venusaur can beat the Shaman and it doesn't even need to. I just needed to weaken him enough so that way Excadrill can finish him off. Like all I need is like 25% on the Shaman. That's all I need is to do like 25% to Shaman. And if I could do that with Venusaur, that is awesome. Here comes the Terrakion, surprisingly. I'm actually surprised he's going into Terrakion here. Especially considering the fact that I know he's got Zen Headbutt Rock Slide and, um, what was this? Did I see any other moves? I don't think I did. I could go for the Protect here. Uh, can I live a hit otherwise, though? Because I feel like I kind of want to just finish this thing off. But I also don't want to chance him setting up. I really, like, don't see him setting up at this point in time. But I also don't want to... I mean, Close Combat does knock me out here. So I'm going to go for the Protect. Get my Wish back. And uh, that'll allow me to live a hit, I think. He's going to go for the Stealth Rocks. So very interesting. So we see Rocks here. I don't know if he... I don't know what... what I didn't, I'm surprised that he went for Rocks there. Um, I can just click Scald. If he goes into Shaman, that's fine with me. I'm at the point now where... I mean, realistically, I just need as much little damage as on, as, on Shaman as I can here. So, if Oxygen goes down, it's not even a big deal. I could just Scald a few times. So let's just go for the Scald on the Shaman. He's going to stay. He's going to close combat. So Vaporeon will pick up the kill here. Um, as I'm going to live the close combat. So Vaporeon kills, um, kills uh, Terrakion with Scald. Uh, sorry, my phone is just going off. Um, so that's going to knock out the Terrakion. So now I just have to get my way around this Shaman here. And the chances that he's like a substitute Leech Seed Shaman, in my opinion, is very, very unlikely. It's very, very unlikely. It wouldn't make sense against my team. He could be like an AV set. He could be like a Life Orb set. But to me, uh, Shaman just doesn't seem like it's going to be that set this week. Uh, my play here is actually I'm just going to Scald and just hope he's not like a substitute set. If he's substitute, that, that's going to be problematic for me. Um, but Venusaur should be able to break the sub. He's going to go for the Psychic, so we do see the Psychic on this thing. Um, and it, we actually live, which is kind of funny. I didn't expect to live. Is he Scarf? Because that didn't do anything. Like, Oh, he's lefties. He's lefties. Okay. So Scald is, or Psychic is his play here. Uh, I'm just going to Scald again. I mean, I, I really don't anticipate it. Like, do I just die? I actually die, which is good. I'm glad I died. Uh, we actually wanted that. We wanted to die there. Um, I'm pretty sure what I can do here is go into Asparagus and just click... Um, we can make this work a couple different ways here. Uh, I think the safest way to make this work is to go into Asparagus here and click Venishock twice and just win that way. And if that doesn't work, I go into Godzilla and then I go into uh, Excadrill and I click X Scissor and we win. So, a couple different options there, but I gotta figure out the least... Like, least uh, the chance for me to mess this up is what I don't want to have happen here. I think I go into Venusaur. Um, the thing is, Godzilla's not going to do much to him. Like, a Pursuit, if he stays in, doesn't really do anything. Especially if he has some bulk investment. But Venusaur Venishock does a good amount. Like, Pursuit doesn't do anything. So I, I gotta go to Venusaur here. And he's not Life Orb, so I actually can probably live two Psychics from this thing. I'm thinking... It's gonna be close, though. Uh, I'm thinking I could live two Psychics from this thing. So I'm going to go for the Venishot, which is my play, obviously. He's going to go for the Psychic. And I'm definitely not living two. But what I will, he gets a crit, that's why. So the crit comes back to, uh, to haunt us, but that's okay. Venishot's going to connect here. It does about half, as I expected, which is very nice. And then basically what I need to do here is I need to get my T-Tar in against this thing, get the Sand up, and then win with Excadrill. That's what I need to do here. So I'm going to go for the Venishark again. I don't think I'm going to live another hit, but he just goes for the Psyche again. 
So I need to go into T-Tar now. Oh, I live! I actually live the Psyche this time! Is this gonna be enough to knock him out? It's gonna be close. This might actually just knock him out. What was he at? And it does knock him out, dude! Wow! Alright, man. So Venusaur uh, kills Shaman with uh, Venishok, and that is gonna be the game. Good game to Leo, man. Uh, that was a big one that we absolutely 1 million percent needed to win. Definitely a little bit of hacks there, man. We got a pretty good crit uh, with the Excadrill on the Crocodile at the beginning of the game. And he did miss a Dragon Tail, which allowed my Venusaur to get to full health. Whether that impacted the full duration of the game, I don't know. I never even sent out T-Tar. I never got my sand up. Excadrill did outspeed his entire team. And again, I would have done a tremendous amount to the... I would have knocked out the Terrakion on one hit. I do about 60 to 70 percent to Blastoise with EQ. And Excadrill does uh, do 77 to about 90 percent to the Shaman. So I only need a little bit of chip damage there, but uh, you know, you never know, that's Pokemon. So either way, man, great match against Leo there, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Please, I encourage you to check out Leo's channel. I've actually been following Leo for a really long time. I watched his YouTube videos before I created content many, many years ago. So definitely show him some love for sure. He's been kicking butt this whole season. He's 10 and 10 and two now, and we're gonna move to eight and four. Again, very, very clutch. Gives us a really solid chance now with these last couple games coming up to potentially make the playoffs. So I'm very glad about that. But I hope you guys did enjoy. This is a pretty intense match, and I, I'm, I'm really glad we were able to pick up a W. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Dan. I'll go by A Drive, and I'm gonna catch you guys later. Peace.